that's good that is great Elder Bailey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Jesus, for what you're doing and all that you're going to do, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this class this day, oh God. We pray that you will release a spirit of revelation, understanding, grace, and mercy upon us this day, O oh God. We pray that you will grant unto us now wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Please, O oh Lord Jesus, grant unto us now the understanding that we need in this time, in this hour. O oh God, let the spirit of simplicity rest upon us now, Lord Jesus, as we begin to get into this Bible study tonight, in your name, Lord. And we pray now that you will just bless your people, O oh God, and those who are wrestling with things in their lives, that they will get a better understanding with your relationship and what you've done for them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. and We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and a Amen. 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 Tonight we're going to be uh, starting a new topic. And uh, I was planning on uh, talking about something else. And all day long the Lord has been dealing with me concerning um, the truth about sin. And basically, that is understanding where sin come from, uh, how it originated, and all of it. And there is a lot of things about what we understand about sin that is from a man perspective, uh, misinterpretation of scripture, and um, should I say religious? And so um, I did a lot of quiet meditation. And then I got into scripture and began to search out scriptures and put things together. And um, I started writing. I even grabbed my book of Enoch and began to do some reading with the book of Enoch. And so I want to do some basic without getting into some real deep stuff uh, uh, concerning this, because if we go with the norm of what sin, uh, understanding the truth about sin, and we will, we will basically start that, um, uh, that sin started in the garden when actually it didn't. And if you just think about it for a moment, sin actually started in heaven with the devil. So when the devil sinned, the Bible tells us that the devil sinned from the beginning. And so when he sinned and, um, and, 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 um, uh, in the beginning, when he led that rebellion against God and he was kicked out of heaven, that was the first sin. And he was kicked out of heaven into the earth, um, which was out of darkness. And he was kicked out into the earth before it was created. And so then, um, and that was the original Sin. The original sin was in heaven, and that was uh, by the devil himself. In heaven, he was called Satan, and then his name was changed to the devil, which means adversary. And I want you to, um, 
I want you to, I want to read a, a couple of definitions for you. One, uh, the name devil. All right, the devil in Hebrew, it means prone to slander, uh, slanderous, accuse, accusing falsely. Um, and the word Satan is adversary or one who withstands adversity. And so whenever we go against whatever God is speaking or God's truth uh, or go contrary to the Holy Spirit, we become a devil or uh, we, we operate in uh, the same way or same attitude as Satan does. And this is why Jesus told the scribes and the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, or you are Satan. Because you go uh, withstand or you go opposite or you, whatever you do, you, you call whatever God speaks, you call it slanderous. You become his adversary. You go against. So the original sin came from the devil. Um, he sinned in heaven against God. He led a rebellion of angels against the Most High, and he was kicked out uh, along with his angels into the outer of darkness, which was the earth before it was created. And if you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, and you will hear what Jesus had to say about that. Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. And Jesus said to the 70 when they came back in verse 17, he's, and the 70 returned again and and said unto him with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But I behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So he let them know that he saw Satan when he fell, when he was kicked out of heaven. Uh, fall like lightning out of heaven and he was cast out of heaven into the hour of darkness. Okay? Now, when we look at the definition of sin in the Hebrew, it means that which is done wrong. It's an offense. It is something that is violation of divine law and is done either in thought or in act. Okay, so anything that is contrary to God. And this is the reason why God gave unto Moses the commandments. Now, when we go back and we look at the commandments, and I didn't write these scriptures down, but if my memory served me correctly, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, if my memory served me correctly... Uh, uh, let me see. But anyway, I, I'm i not. That's not where I'm going to go. In other words, he said the, the commandments are written upon two sayings. And the two sayings that it's written upon is that we should love the Lord with all our heart, all our strength and all our might. And that we should love our neighbor the same way. So in other words, to obey God, we have to do it with all our heart, all our might, all our strength. And then we love each other same way. And if we do this, we'll fulfill all the laws of God and all the sayings of God. Because the commandments of God are everything that God has is, is asking us to do towards him and towards each other is uh, basically the same. It's basically the same. Loving him 
and loving each other. And that's what it boils down to. All right. So sin is anything that is done wrong towards God and towards each other. It's either offense and it's violating his law. And his law is divine love towards him or towards each other. It's either done in thought or done in act. Now, there's something else I want to show you. I want you to go to 1 John chapter 3. Now, I'm really not expecting a lot of people. I'm doing this on Facebook Live as well, but I'm not expecting a lot of people to hang around. I really am not. So, um, but those who want to hear this will hear it and those who don't think they're already there, they'll do whatever they want to do. But there is a there there is a spirit of truth that's in this that causes us to that we need to re-examine ourselves to make sure that we don't miss the mark. Because there's also a spirit of self righteousness that we have about ourselves where we think we are right and we have a tendency to justify our wrong because of our own self-righteousness. And we have to live with each other through God's eyes and not through our own eyes. Now, um, 1 John chapter 3, verses 4 and 9, it says, Whosoever sin, transgressed." And the word transgressive have a TH on it. And that TH speaks of something that is done over and over again. It is something that is repeated. It's not something that is done one time. It's something that is repeated. And when something is repeated, it is done willfully. I must say that again. When something is repeated... It is done willfully. All right. Whosoever, 1 John 3 and 4, whosoever committed, and committed is a TH, is also something that is done uh, repeatedly. Sin, tran and whosoever committed sin, transgressive, you repeat it, also the law. For sin is the transgression. Of the law. And so this means that if you're committing sin, you transgress the law. If you're doing this willfully, that's mean that you know what you're doing. You're doing it willfully, knowingly that it is wrong. So you are transgressing the law. You are transgressing God's, but you are willfully violating God's divine law through thought, thought and act. And therefore that makes this a sin. So this makes the truth about sin true. And therefore you're guilty. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to keep reading. And you know that he was manifested. Jesus to take away our sins and in him is no sin. So there was no sin in Jesus. Whosoever abideth, T-H, that means to stay in him, stay connected, stay sensitive, stay aware, in him sinneth, continue, sinneth, sinneth, that continue not so you stay sensitive to him enough that you do not if you sin you don't continue sinning so you can be in him and sin but you will not continue to sin you will repent get it right and and not do it again whosoever sin it continue have not seen him Neither know him. Now it is identifying that there is no relationship. Why? 
because the truth about sin is not known by to you because you don't know him. And all this is speaking of is a person who has a relationship with him and a person who doesn't. This is why understanding the truth about sin is so important. This is why Jesus stressed so much about not being or learning or following the ways of the scribes and the Pharisees because they had a relationship with the tradition of the system of church. They were religious, but they did not have a relationship with God. He that abideth in me, Jesus said, will have eternal life. Abideth, T-H, continue, live, stay. And he will lead and guide you into eternal life. But you have to stay, abide it, continue it. All right, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth, T-H, continue righteousness. Righteousness speaks of a process of someone who does that which is right constantly because you're being led by the Spirit is righteous. This is something you practice as a way of righteous, even as he is righteous. Now, when he speaks of even as he is righteous, he is actually referring to a person who is following him and say, he who, who, who doeth righteousness is righteous, just like I am righteous because you're being led by me. Verse 8, he that committed, T-H, that continueth in sin. I'm going to back up so that you will get this and understand this. It's one thing to sin and it is and move from that sin. Repent and move away from that sin. But it's another thing to sin and continue to stay in that sin. And when you stay in that sin, then you are committing and continue that sin. You commit it and you stand in it. He that committed sin, stand in that sin, is of the devil, which means that you are being led by Satan, not by the spirit. I don't care how much you stand in church. You're being led by the devil. He that committed sin, standing in sin, is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning, which means he's taking it right back to heaven. The devil was the first one to sin because he sinned in heaven. He, re he came against God in heaven. For this purpose, because the devil sinned in heaven, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested or became flesh so that he might destroy the works of the devil which comes against our flesh by giving us the Holy Spirit so that we will have something to war against the devil that comes against our flesh. So when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then we have something that lives inside of us to war against the temptation of the devil, the temptation of the devil that we have something to fight against so that we can overcome his temptation. And this is why we have to understand. Now, it's a matter of us establishing a relationship with him. And I see that when we get caught up in the religious system, it have a tendency to pamper our flesh and give us this sense of 
it's okay. I don't want to be pampered that it's okay when I know that one day I will have to stand before God and realize that it won't be okay. That's the part that bothers me. That's the part that bothers me. I want to take you to something that I need you to listen to. Because some of the things that we have gotten involved with today and we're trying to figure out where all this stuff comes from, uh, some of the sin, some of the craziness that are in this world that we have learned, Some of this stuff came from the fallen angels. And I went and got my, pulled out my book of Enoch. And there is a, um, there's a scripture. I want to talk about righteousness and unrighteousness. And righteousness, in a broad sense, is the state of him or a person who is as he, as he ought to be, which is righteous. So in, other, in order for me to be righteous, I have to have an example before me that I can be compared to. So when I receive the Holy Spirit through visions and dreams and prophecy, the Holy Spirit gives me a picture he gives me a, 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 a vision, an insight of what righteousness from God's point of view is. And so therefore, I know that I am to be righteous as he is righteous. So therefore, Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead and guide you into all truth. And so he bring me into his Righteousness. So righteousness is in a broad sense, the state of him who is as he ought to be. The righteousness is the condition that is acceptable to God. Now watch. It is the doctrine concerning the way in which man may attain a state approved of God. It includes God's integrity, God's virtue, God's purity of life, God's rightness, God's correctness of thinking, God's correctness of feeling, and God's correctness of acting. So when we come to rightness or righteousness, we, when the Holy Spirit, when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit corrects our integrity. He corrects our virtue. He corrects our purity of life. He corrects our rightness. He, co he corrects our thinking. He corrects our feelings. And he corrects our acting. That corrects the things that we do so that they will be righteous. Now what the fallen angels did was cause us to do things or cause us to act and create things that were unrighteous. And therefore it caused God to be angry. Now, there is sin. So we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And then there are acts of unrighteousness. So we have to give an account to God for our sin and unrighteousness. Let you think on that for a moment. 
So we have to answer for our deeds done in and out of our body. I'm going to go over that one more time. Then I'm going to read something to you. In the book of Enoch, in chapter 8, that's going to, if you haven't ever read the book of Enoch, that's going to blow your mind. All right? Righteousness. May obtain a state of approved of God. And this is what the Holy Spirit did. When Jesus came and the Holy Spirit came, the Spirit of Truth came. It caused us, caused us when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it caused the our approved God to approve, uh, change our, our integrity, our virtue, our purity of life, our rightness, and correct our thinking, our feelings, and our acting. It caused all of those things to be accepted and be righteous in the eyes of God when we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And this is why it's important that we spend time praying so that we can follow the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we can be righteous. So that our deeds will be righteous. That our deeds will be righteous. Notice that the scribes and the Pharisees read the scriptures, prayed. They, they was in the center of God. They were doing all those things. And yet Jesus called them hypocrites. Everything they were doing were, was not righteous in the eyes of Jesus. And he told his disciples and everybody else not to follow them. Which means that their deeds were not righteous. I wonder why nobody never picked that up. Over and over again, he kept telling the followers and his disciples, learn not the ways of the scribes and the Pharisees. And this were the, this were the religious leaders of that day. And Jesus called them hypocrites. They had long prayers. They studied the scriptures. And he says on the outside you're clean and white. But on the inside you're full of dead men's bones. Why? Because everything that they were doing was not righteous. It looked righteous but it was not. And this is why the Holy Spirit makes the difference. Now, let me read this for you. I'm reading for the book of Enoch. If you don't have this book, you need to get it. it was, to me, it answered a lot of questions about things in the Bible. It put icing on the cake for me. And those who know me knew I had a Bible college so I, 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 I'm a student of the Bible, history, I study history of the Bible. So uh, it answered a lot of questions with me when I got this book. I got this book back in the 70s. So I've had it for, for over 30, close to 30, 40 years, over 40 some years. And this is from chapter 8. Now there were angels that was kicked out of heaven with Lucifer when he was kicked out. These angels taught the men, Adam descendants, taught them the secrets of heaven. And God got angry. And if you go to Genesis chapter 6, uh, Genesis chapter 6, and we'll go there real quick and I'll read that. Genesis chapter 6 and start at verse 1 and read down to verse 7. Let me read, go there first. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Something happened. And with some of you, if you read this and once I read this, it's going to answer some questions for you. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, which are these fallen angels, 
saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, and they took them wise of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always scribe with man, for that he also is flesh, and yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. And they were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that were the sons of God came unto the daughters of men. In other words, those angels uh, who had sex with the daughters of men, those children came out to be giants and bear children to them. And the same became mighty men and were of old men of renown. And they lived long time, real long time. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. So it was, it was disagreeable. It was unpleasant. It was always evil thinking. It was bad. And it said it was continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. And it repented to me that I had made them. Now, this is what happened. Now, we know what we have in our Bible. But here in the book of Enoch, it actually tells you why God, why what actually happened win this. Now these fallen angels, this is what they did when they started mingling with these uh, daughters of men and with these men. Alright, and Azel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known them the metals of the earth and arts of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of alimony, and the beautifying of the eyelids, and all kinds of costly stones, and all coloring tenements. So in other words, they began to teach them how to take the metals of the earth, melt it down, and to make weapons, and to make jewelry, and how to make uh, colors for the eyelids, and makeup, and all this kind of stuff. And there arose much godliness, and they committed fornications, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Simajas, one of the angels, taught enchantments and root cutting, and Amorous, resolving of enchantments, and Balazza taught astrology, and Cobadel taught constellation of the stars, Equil. The knowledge of the clouds, Equil, the signs of the earth, Shamzel, the signs of the sun, Serizel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried. They cried and their cry went up to heaven. And so as they begin to do this, all types of things begin to happen. And it goes on into chapter 9 about many other things they begin to do there. And they begin to kill and they begin to eat the flesh of men and kill one another and begin to make all these roots, cutting roots and begin to deal with sorceries and begin to deal with spirits. A whole lot of things that we see today, these fallen angels taught it in that generation. And they literally opened the door for these spirits and what we call devils and demons to be released. Now that those people died but the spirits that they created lived. So the flood didn't kill the spirits that they created and opened up. But the human beings died. But those spirits kept living. And the demons and everything else. So when you see today the makeup and the jewelry, the earrings and how they begin to crap and make it up. All this was taught. And if you're going on, keep reading into chapter 10. It says they taught them the secrets of heaven. And this made God angry. And this is the reason why he destroyed the earth. Because they taught them unrighteousness. 
and the Holy Spirit came through Jesus to remove the unrighteousness of man doing. Every time God will bring and raise up an intercessory in the earth to undo the unrighteousness of man's doing in the earth that happened because of Satan being kicked out of heaven. Not because Adam ate from the tree, but because Satan sinned in heaven and bought sin in the earth and deceived Adam. And once Adam ate from that tree, sin came into the earth, but Satan was the one that bought it. And from that point on, we've been fighting it ever since. Sin originated from Satan's fall. Adam submitted to it. And now we've been fighting. This is why we find our, see, this is why we put the fight between uh, us and Satan. But see, Satan know that he's already doomed. The fight really is between us, righteousness, and unrighteousness. You ready for this? We overcome the devil. We defeat him by becoming righteous. He lose every time we do that which is right before God because there is power in holiness. Holiness is the brightness of God that destroys Satan. It destroys all power of darkness. So when we do that which is right before God, we release God's glory. It destroys the power of sin. It destroys the power of unrighteousness. It destroys the power of all ungodliness. So what happens is that we getting so caught up in trying to get the power without understanding that the power comes from righteousness. When we talk about holiness, and you want to take holiness and make it a denomination. Holiness is no more than separation from that which is unholy. You cannot be holy until you begin to practice righteousness. When you practice righteousness, then the Holy Spirit makes you holy. Righteousness, sanctifi sanctification, righteousness, sanctification, holiness. They, that's how they work. And it all starts with first identifying what sin really is. This is why 1 John 3 said he that sin is of the devil because the devil sins from the beginning. But we don't want to we want, we don't want to admit the fact that if I sin I belong to the devil. And see you're not going to like me because I said that, but that's what 1 John 3 4 and 9 says. He that sin is of the devil because the devil sinned from the beginning. He is the originator of sin. Those fallen angels follow Satan when he fell. They are bound with chains in the bottomless pit, waiting, waiting for that thousand year reign so they can be loose and come up out of the earth for that one more try. They're waiting for this tribulation period to come. And 
what what is he what is God waiting on? He waiting on the body of Christ to come together in full righteousness. And righteousness is a state that's approved of God. Integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. As you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. It all starts with the right understanding and interpretation of the spirit of truth of the word of God. You first have to hear and understand the word of God and apply it to your life. You just can't walk around and just be right. You have to have doctoring. You have to have a word. There have to be some form of instruction. That's why God gave Moses the divine law. He gave Moses the law and it's more and the law that God gave Moses is more than 10 commandments. It's more than 10 commandments. If you think God only gave Moses 10 commandments, you've been hoodwinked. Everything that God gave Moses as an order to, for establishing the children of Israel to be a people unto him are more than just Ten Commandments. It has something to do with how they, how they eat, how they dress, how they appear before him, how they should atone themselves, how they consecrate themselves for me. That's before him. That's more than ten. It's more than ten. It has to do with their attitude. It has to do with their behavior. Has to do with everything with what we just read about righteousness. Right? I'm going to read this and I'm going to be finished. And we'll come back with another part of this. Because I, I, I'm trying to. I want everybody. I'm trying to get people to shift in their thinking. And and really see this from a different angle than from the religious point of view. Because if you stay in the religious point of view, you're going to justify your own self. And that's dangerous when you justify yourself. Because when you stand before God, he just might say, I don't know you. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a man is right in his own eyes. I want to know. I, 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 I lay down every night and I ask the Lord, how do you see me? How do you see me? I, I, I don't care whether I reach the world or not. That, that's not my, that's, that's not important to me. I don't care whether I'm heard around the world or not. I don't care about that. I just want to hear him say, well done. So I, I'm listening to him. I'm, I, I, want to, I want my words to be seasoned by him. I want my mind and my heart to be in right tune with him. When, he, when I need to be corrected, I want to have enough humility in my heart to fall on my face and repent and to get it right before him. Because I don't want nothing to separate me from him. See, I, I, I've already had a visit to his judgment seat. I've already been, had a visit to the lake of fire. And I don't look down in that pit and I don't see a whole lot of apostles and bishops and preachers and Prophets all down in the lake of fire, preaching and prophesying and laying hands in the lake of fire where they don't miss God and they still doing ministry. And I asked the angel why they don't miss them. Why are they still doing this? And he said, because they never outgrew ministry. 
They never outgrew ministry. They were so busy doing ministry that they never became righteous. Which means they never got it right between them and God. Because they thought ministry. It was about ministry, doing ministry. And the relationship between them and God never became personal. That's why I did the, I did the teaching last month. Understanding the difference between the work of God and the work of righteousness. You could do the work of God and still miss God because the work of righteousness is personal. The work of God is for somebody else. Help me somebody. Jesus told us, many will appear before me in that day of judgment seat. Lord, I cast out devils. I healed the sick. I raised the dead. And he will tell them, depart from me. I don't know you. Your work was of iniquity. Why? Because the work of righteousness never took place. And the truth of the matter is, why? Because they never understood the truth about sin and about righteousness. We never got to the place where they got past the sin that was in them. And it had to do with their righteousness and his righteousness. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Listen to this. Some of the things that falls under sin that have to do with um, unrighteousness. All right? Th these things are unrighteousness. Un these things are unrighteousness. Right? But they're sin. Vain talking. You can write this scripture down. Proverbs 10 and 19. These are unrighteousness. Contempt for others. Have been just being contempt of others. Proverbs 14 and 21. Oh boy, this is going to be a good one. Foolish thoughts are foolish talking. Proverbs 24 and 9. Foolish thoughts are foolish talking. Proverbs 24 and 9. Unrighteousness. Unbelief. Romans 14 and 23. Neglect of opportunity. That means whenever you, you had opportunity to do something right or to do something that was good for someone or to help someone and you neglected that opportunity. That's a work of unrighteousness. James 4 and 17, especially if you had the ability to do it. James 4 and 17. Wow. Transgression of the law. First John three and four. Now, transgression of the law is not something that you do one time. It's something that you willfully do all the time. Without reservation. It's just something you do. And you don't regret. You have no remorse for it. You just do it and don't care. That's what transgression of the law is. First John 3 and 4. And then the last one. Is all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. First John 5 and 17. Now, 
this is going to be hard. All unrighteousness includes anything that is not spirit led. Anything that is not spirit discipline and cleanse. Now listen to me carefully. We have to grow in him. So therefore, it's going to take time for him to take all of our unrighteousness. Teach us, train us, develop us. So it's going to take years and years and years and years and years and years for that to take place. Before you die, if you learn how to discipline yourself before him, by the time you die, all of your unrighteousness will be gone. But you have to learn how to submit yourself to him. Now, the key to that is how much do you love him? And how much are you willing to be like him and to be right in his sight? And that's the key. And that's why to go back to the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart all your strength, and all your might. The second one is love your neighbors the same way. Upon these two commandments hang all the laws and all the sayings of all the prophets and everything God is saying. So everything God is saying, everything God is doing, hangs upon these two sayings. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your strength, all your might. And then love your neighbor or every other, the next, every other human being the same way that you love God. And when you do this, he say you will fulfill the law and the purpose of God. Because then you will be right standing with God to fulfill God's righteousness is love. Loving him, loving each other. That's what it takes. All right. All right, that's it. And to those who said hello, hello, Veronica, hello, Sonia, hello, my niece. And I will talk to y'all next Tuesday. We'll come back with a part two of this. Listen to this video again. Go back and play back. Those who are on call in line. Listen to this again. I got hand, I got some handouts for you tonight. I will have some different ones for tomorrow night. For next Monday night. On this. I'm telling you. You got to get an understanding. Hello Linton. Hello Veronica. Um, Sophie. Hello. Hey Leonard. You got to, you really got to get an understanding of this. I'm telling you, it's going to make a difference. It really, really, really is. And I don't know about anybody else. I don't want to miss God. I really don't. And watch this. The only thing that will cause me to miss God is sin. The only thing that's going to cause me to miss God is sin. And the only person who has power over sin in my life is me. All right, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome.